Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We got another interview for you guys today, part of our summer series that we've had on the site here. We got Brevin Galloway, Charleston men's basketball. He's a guard over there entering his senior season. Brevin, thanks so much for joining us here on the site today. Oh, yes, sir. I'm excited. Great to have you on. I know we're talking a little bit about the coronavirus before we hopped on the interview here, so that might come up a little bit later, just kind of your training, um, you know, plans that you have during this off season, which has definitely been a unique one. But I want to start here, you know, just kind of early on in your career, real basic. Do you kind of remember what point, you know, in your younger days that you really wanted to play basketball at a high level? I mean, when did the basketball dreams really start? Uh, the basketball dream definitely started for me when I was younger. That's pretty much all I was preached about mm-hmm. um, as far as having – I had the ball in my hands since I was three. My mom and dad both played sports in college. So that was kind of just a given. You know, I was going to be an athlete. I was going to play basketball in college. Mm -hmm. And, you know, luckily I was blessed to be able to receive a scholarship and play at a pretty high level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm thankful for it. And, I mean, growing up, you kind of grow up in this era where we have so many great basketball players. You got, you know, Kobe, LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo. I mean, the list goes on and on. Were there any players that you kind of really admired in the NBA when you were growing up? I, I would have to say he wasn't in the NBA at the time, but it was definitely Curry. Um, mm-hmm. I saw him playing college before, obviously, he blew up. Uh, they played at the Charlotte Bobcats Arena, which is what it was then. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could just tell, like, we kind of had, like, the same kind of – not we pretty had a similar game, but as far as, like, size and attributes and stuff like that, like, we, were, we weren't the most athletic, weren't the tallest, weren't the fastest, but just the way he was able to play and, you know, have an impact on the game meant a lot to me for a smaller guy being able to do that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and obviously he can shoot the ball and I can shoot the ball pretty well. So mm-hmm. um, he definitely had an impact on me growing up. And I tried to model my game after him. After seeing him in college that one game, uh, it was very eye-opening. So I pretty much just tried to look after him and pretty much try to play like him. Yeah, you can see a lot of that in your game with your three-point shooting. I know um, we're going to talk a little bit about that later because that's obviously a very big part of your game. And I like the Charlotte Bobcats reference. I mean, that's a nice throwback right there. Totally, totally forgot about them. I I actually have a Corey Maggette Charlotte Bobcats jersey. Or no, it's a, I think it's a Golden, is it a Golden State jersey? I have a, yeah, it's a Golden State jersey, Corey Maggette. But uh, I know he spent some time on the Bobcats too, so that's always a nice throwback right there. Um, and I know growing up too, you participated in some basketball camps where you kind of first built your relationship with your current coach, Coach Grant. I mean, can you talk a little bit about those camps, how they kind of helped you develop in middle and high school? Uh, yeah, they were both just ways to obviously get my name out there and then obviously mm-hmm. play against better guys that were obviously getting recruited and that were ranked and stuff like that, trying to get um, potential scholarships and stuff like that. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it was definitely a good experience just to go up against some top-notch competition at a young age and kind of get adjusted to how it was going to be competition-wise for the rest of my life as far as fighting for playing time and playing against older guys and stuff like that because I was going to the camps mostly as a – middle school like eighth grade Mm -hmm. young freshman so obviously the guys that are playing against were a little bit more polished more athletic uh more aggressive so i was able to use that experience and translate it into um my later years in high school and you know where i am now yeah i know clearly it worked out for you you played aau as well uh i mean i gotta ask what's the competition like in aau what'd you kind of try and gain from that experience i know you're playing against some really high caliber players there um, but there, were there any parts of your game that you really tried to work on specifically in that AAU atmosphere? I feel like the biggest thing, because uh, I, I played point guard up until like my 16 and under year. Mm-hmm. So if, if anything, uh, my game got kind of collapsed as far as what I was doing on the court, because mm-hmm. obviously you playing point guard, you pretty much control the team. Uh, 16 and 17 under, I kind of pretty much shifted over to the wing, and I just pretty much became a shooter. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like my better years of AAU were a little bit earlier just because I was able to show more, showcase more. And then obviously I had an injury that prevented me from playing, I think, my best basketball because I was playing my best basketball going into my injury. Mm-hmm. But then, um, you know, obviously that has its effects on that. But I was able to bounce back from that and still be in a solid shooter and solid enough to earn a scholarship. So, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I definitely feel like the biggest thing to coming out of AAU was just that experience, just playing against the guys, like I said, with the camps. Mm-hmm. Just playing against nationally ranked guys, playing against guys that you know are going to be pros and trying to learn what you can and just make the most out of each um, situation that you get yourself into. 
it's certainly a helpful route. I've seen, you know, kind of a lot of guys take it, say similar things to you. You know, it's definitely, you want to play at that high caliber level in order to get yourself better, get yourself ready for college. You also had a great high school career. I mean, you were a three-star recruit, ranked as high as the number four uh, player and recruit in all of South Carolina. I mean, you scored over a thousand points in your career. Your senior season was fantastic right before college, averaged 20 points, six rebounds, and five assists per game. And you also classified as a top five player in the state of South Carolina uh, by the South Carolina Basketball Coaches Association. So you got recognition from your fellow players and your coaches. I, I gotta add, I mean, when you have a high school career like that, are you kind of nervous for college or does that take some of the nerves away? Do you feel really ready? And I mean, do you feel that you just kind of, I mean, I know it's a big transition from high school to college, but you kind of feel like you're going to handle, you, do you kind of feel like you're going to handle that well when you have a high school career like that? Uh, as far as looking at the numbers, I was impressed with the numbers I was able to do because I only played two years of varsity. Like mm -hmm. uh, I didn't play my junior year due to injury. And then ninth grade, I was on JV. So, I mean, my 10th and 12th grade year, I put in the work and I obviously produced numbers. So with those two years put together and with the stuff I was able to accomplish, I was pretty, pretty confident going into college. Obviously, I know college is just a whole new world and I was able to mentally mature myself as mm -hmm. far as like what to expect. Like, obviously, you're not going to go in and be the top dog. You're going to have to work for it because obviously you have older guys. Mm -hmm. And especially the way Charleston was moving forward, like we have older guys that are going to be pros ahead of me. So I knew I was going to wait my turn. And, mm -hmm. But as far as like the – I knew I was ready for it. Obviously, you know, you have to work because high school, the competition level is the way it's not there as it is in college every game. And so, I mean, it was, it was definitely different for me. Um, mm -hmm. You had to get used to working out more because in high school, you can kind of get lazy and still get away with things. But college is a whole different world. You take a playoff, you slack off one practice and then coach has a different perception of you. Mm -hmm. So you can't really have that kind of thing going into it. Cause I mean, their job depends on you. For sure. So you kind of have to just kind of all grasp that into you got to grasp that early in order to make the most out of your college career, especially early in your career. Mm -hmm. And I know you settled on Charleston. Obviously, you had the relationship uh, with Coach Grant prior, but what did you kind of like about the program? I mean, did you plan on staying local, or was it ever a thought that you kind of wanted to go a little bit farther away from home? Well, I mean, what really made you settle on Charleston ultimately? Uh, well, Charleston was an easy pick for me just mm -hmm. because of the relationship I had with Coach Grant. Um, yeah. I knew I – knew like he gave his players freedom as far as offensively and you know and i trusted him that was the biggest thing i just mm -hmm. knew i could trust him i knew he was gonna have my back i knew he'd fight for me i knew he'd love me take care of me and all of that good stuff that you wanted to coach so i mean it was easy it was an easy pick for me i mean he offered me and i committed i want to say like a week later like it was an early it was an early process for me like as far as because i knew where i wanted to go and then you can't beat charleston like it's one of the top cities in the world mm -hmm. um you know it's a tourist attraction and then obviously the people here are great, uh, like my teammates and staff. And so, I mean, it was easy. It was a no-brainer for me. Like, I was able to pick that. I was able to make that decision, and it was easy, and I didn't have to worry about, you know, having any second thoughts or mm -hmm. thinking maybe should I go somewhere else or do something like that. But, yeah, because I, I had the relationship built with them already, so it was a it was an easy pick for me. You have seemed to fit really well there, you know, in your career so far. And I know one thing about Coach Grant is he's very kind of straightforward with his players, tells you how it is. As you mentioned, you kind of had to wait you know, your turn to get the play time that you needed, get the opportunities because there were some guys in front of you. You were coming in as one of these younger guys. You really had to work for it. I know I'll look at it this way. Some guys come into college programs. They will play immediately, get a bunch of play time, and, you know, we'll see them go into a sophomore slump, have maybe some rough years later in their career. But you really had to work for it. You really had to find your opportunities I have to ask, does that kind of make you hungrier when you don't come in immediately and just be a star? Does that kind of make you a little bit hungrier to go out there, really work for your opportunities? And have you found that kind of benefit you later down the road here in your career? Yeah, I feel like it has. Um, mm -hmm. Just because of, you know, whenever you feel like you're not getting the opportunity you deserve or you feel like you can help the team in a specific way and then that you're not able to get that opportunity, it definitely does sting. So whenever I got my opportunity, I wanted to make the most of it. But like I had said earlier, like you kind of have to, you kind of have to know whether you're gonna play or not. Like, mm -hmm. luckily for me, I've been been able to play with three, well, two pros right now. One that's about to be a pro in Grant Riddler, mm -hmm. um, coming up. I've been able to play with them, 
for the last three, four years. So I've been able to learn a lot and take in as much as I can from them. So, you know, this year I'll have my chance to lead the team and be the go-to guy for our team. And I'll be able to use everything that I've learned and watch them do and be able to implement it in my game. So I'm really excited about that. But yeah, I'm definitely hungry though, because I mean, I want to be known at the end of the day, just like those guys do. And I'll be, I'll be able to get my opportunity this year to do that. Mm -hmm, So I'm definitely excited about that. And I'm going to use everything, uh, and I've learned in my past to, to do just that and, you know, just to make sure we win, too. That's the biggest thing I feel like that they did that I have to make sure that we do because it's not about individual scores or numbers and stuff like that. You got to make sure you're winning as a team, too, because that's how also you get um attention as well. No doubt about it. I mean, it's all about kind of that team play, how you perform mm-hmm. individually, but also how you contribute to the team as a whole. And I know one thing I kind of love about your career here is the way that you've bounced back in college. I mean, you start off, you come into D1 basketball, you redshirt your first season, and your redshirt freshman year, you played just seven games, and then you got sidelined because of injury. So I have to ask you, I mean, when you redshirt, then you face that injury that side, sidelines you just after seven games. I can only imagine the frustration there. I mean, that is in a prime example of adversity. You respond very well, though. You come back playing all 33 games, started in 32 of them. Eight points per game, led the team with 51 threes in your first kind of legitimate season. So, I mean, how do you kind of come out after those challenges and have a season where you were your team's third leading scorer? Um, I, I think it's just more of a – obviously, I'm really, really heavy into religion and I'm faith-based. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of faith um, in terms of what God has planned for me. Um, I feel like – everything that I've been through is setting me up for a breakout season this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it's not going to go your way immediately. I feel like, well, that's what I've learned. Obviously it happens differently for other players, but I definitely feel like everything that I've been through has humbled me and it'll prepare me for the success that I'm about to go through. So uh, along that whole journey, it's just been like, you know, just wait your time, just wait your time. It's not time. It's not time yet. Mm -hmm. Um, It's God sending you a message. Don't worry about it. Just be patient. Just keep working, keep working. So I've I've been able to be content with whatever's going on in the moment right now. So that that way I haven't been stressed out necessarily or panicking about, you know, my future or playing pro ball and stuff like that. So I feel like that's definitely been helping me out. That definitely helped me out through that whole process because I wasn't scared or fearful of anything. I was just kind of playing it in the moment, and that helped me out as far as dealing with that adversity that I faced. Mm -hmm. I mean, you seem just to kind of take it year by year and just mm-hmm. kind of trust what's what's going on, trust where you're going. Uh, you didn't really, you know, force anything. You just kind of went with the flow, took it day by day, I would assume. And, I mean, clearly it's it's been the key to success for you. I know you kicked it up this past season as well, 11.3 points per game, shot the three ball at 36%, had nearly 30 minutes on the floor per game. You guys go 17 and 14. Um, I, I said we are going to talk about your three-point shooting. I mean, we have to here. There's no doubt about it. Have you always emphasized that three-point shooting, or did it just kind of start in college? I mean, what's the key to developing those shooting skills? I know you mentioned you looked up to Steph from an early age. If you're going to look up to a three-point shooter, Steph is the guy. Uh, so, I mean, how did you kind of develop those skills, and when did you really start emphasizing it in your game? I would say that's what my dad told me from a young age. He mm-hmm. always just told me that. I mean, there's always spot for a shooter on the floor. I mean, you need somebody that can stretch the defense and that can knock down consistent shots. So if you can find yourself doing that at a high level, then there will always be a spot for you. You'll always be able to get a scholarship, make a roster, make money possibly doing that in the future. Mm-hmm. So um, I put a lot of emphasis on that growing up. And I think it's just repetition and confidence. The mm-hmm. biggest thing is confidence for me, I feel like. I feel like if, you, if you're a shooter and you miss five in a row, uh, you can't be worried about that. you got to make sure that next one, you got to think it's going in as well. Because I mean, if you're not mentally locked in or mentally, if you're not if you're not mentally tough, then mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to be a good shooter just because of you can't be worried about missing a shot or airballing or mm-hmm. you know missing six in a row, seven in a row because you're going to have games like that. Like I've had games this past year, I missed nine shots in a row, but mm-hmm. you hit, but you hit your last five and then you end up having a good night. That's just how it goes. Mm-hmm. So you just got to be mentally tough and just fight through that stuff. But yeah, I would say around. I, middle school, middle school is whenever I pretty much became like that shooter. Like I, everybody mm-hmm. knew I could shoot threes and consistently do that at a good level. So yeah, that's what I, I would say. I put a lot of emphasis on it or started doing it a lot with middle school. 
I think the confidence thing that you kind of mentioned is a is a huge part of it because you know as a shooter, if you get that opportunity, you're expected to shoot. I mean, you could be ice cold, but you know you still have those skills. You still have those skills deep down in there, the ability to make the shot. So got to go for that opportunity, and that's what I think might hold a lot of guys back, not really having that confidence. Um, I know back when I played, when I was like in the eighth grade, I was a decent shooter. Uh, definitely not your caliber. That's why I'm not playing college basketball, but, um, I did not have that confidence. I, I'd miss a few shots. I'd lose it. So to have that confidence, is really tough, especially in college, especially division one, when you're playing against, you know, guys that are about to go pro best athletes, you know, at your age. So that is what you need. You need that confidence. So it's great to see that you have it. And I know, you know, your confidence, your three point shooting, your scoring, it kind of kicked up a notch in those conference games. So, I mean, when you're going into those conference games, do you kind of change anything around, you know, pregame training as opposed to those non-conference games? I know there's obviously more emphasis on the conference games, but is it just kind of business as usual for you? Yeah, I would say it is just because of, you know, like the teams that I've been on in the past. Like, you have to be, well, first of all, you have to accept your role Mm -hmm. as far as what you're going to do, like, in a game. Like, obviously playing with guys like Grant Riller, Jarrell Brantley, and Joe Cheeley, like, you know that you're not going to get 15, 17 shots a game. That's just not going to happen. So you have to make sure that you make your opportunities count. And I knew that my opportunities would come behind the three-point line. So that's what I practiced. The majority of my shots were spot-up shots, um, you know, in-game type shots that I would get off of what they created for me. Like, obviously, they're going to draw attention. Mm-hmm. So I pretty much just worked on, you know, knocking down open shots. And just getting a lot of reps up doing that just because I knew those were going to be my type of shot. So, but obviously this year, um, whenever we've been able to get into the gym, I've been working on a lot more, you know, variety. I've been working on a variety of things just because I'm going to have the ball in my hands a lot more. I'm going to be coming off screen. I'm going to be in ISO. I'm going to be in ISO situations. Um, because obviously my production levels are going to go up just because, I mean, I'm the guy now. So mm-hmm. I got to work sure. on a lot more than just standing and shooting in the corner and, you know, just working on my spot up shot, which I, which is able, which I'm able to do already easily, just because I've been doing that for two years now. Mm-hmm. So, so that'll be easy. So that'll just like towards the end of my workout. Now, that's what I do. I probably try to try to get like 150 May threes in. But other than that, it's just trying to work on stuff that I need to work on for the upcoming season, mm-hmm. and stuff that I know I'm gonna need in situation. Yeah, this is your senior year right here. I mean, and as you mentioned, you are the guy, uh, and this is kind of. You know, wrapping up a college career that's been great so far. You have a chance to just kind of really go over the top. Sky's the limit this year for you. Um, so approaching a year like this, what are you kind of looking most forward to? And honestly, what will you miss the most? I mean, this is the final season of college basketball. So what are you kind of going to miss about these days you've had at Charleston? Uh, well, I'm looking I'm looking forward to obviously having a great individual year. Mm-hmm. I just want to exceed all expectations for myself and do what I know that I'm capable of. I really don't care about proving anybody else wrong mm-hmm. just because I don't want to put that pressure on myself. Like I just want to go out there and do what I can do. And I know that I can average 18 to 22 points um, with how we play and how, how freely coach Grant lets us play and, you know, how our roster is looking. I'm going to get most of the shot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited about that. And I want to make the most of the opportunity because I can look back at my high school games and, have some regret about not being aggressive enough and Mm -hmm. maybe being scared to take some shots or be wild. But this year, no, I'm not going to have any, I'm not going to live with that regret, especially college level right before I'll go Mm -hmm. into my professional career. So I'm just going to be free and, you know, be, just be myself out there. I mean, I may take a lot of crazy shots, but I'm going to have fun with it. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And obviously just try to win. That's the biggest thing too. But then I'm going to miss, I'm definitely going to miss the meals. Oh yeah. I love to eat. (laughs) Yeah, the team the team meals on the way trips are the best. Um, going to Outback, Olive Garden, places oh. like that. What's your favorite uh, dish? What's your favorite dish from Outback? Mm. Uh, Outback, I like the Alice Springs chicken. All right, good choice right there. I haven't Alice been a chicken. haven't been to Outback in a while. I gotta get there now. Yeah, you can't beat the bread. You can't beat the bread and the cheese fries with the Alice Springs. You can't beat that. That does sound pretty good. I'll tell you what though. You said you went to Olive Garden too. Yeah, yeah, we we'll go to Olive Garden too. Yeah. Ah, man, the breadsticks there, those, those hit differently. I'll tell you that. Yeah, those, those, those are top three for sure. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely can agree with you on that. <laughs> no doubt about it. Top three. Uh, you know what? Let, let's do this. This is a first time interview thing here. 
top three, you know, breadsticks or rolls from restaurants. I want to hear yours. I got a, I got a great top three that cannot be beat. I want to hear yours though. I want to see if we, we match up well here. Okay. But I gotta, I gotta figure out what kind of restaurants. Do y'all have O Charlie's up there? No. I, d- I don't think we do. I don't think we do. Uh, that's tough. See, I knew that was going to play a part into it because I know we're not going to have the same kind of restaurant. That's fine. You you can keep it You can keep it local. I'll do my research later, and I'll take your word for it. You can keep it local because I think one of the restaurants that I was going to say is uh, is local as well, and you guys don't have it down there in South Carolina. Okay, man. Okay, because at number one for me, I'm going to have to say Texas Row House. Oh, my God. Let's go. That's my number one as well. All right, I'm glad. Man, yeah. the the cinnamon butter, man, the cinnamon butter. Exactly. exactly, the cinnamon butter. That's what makes it hit. That's what makes it. Hit. All right, perfect. We're so we're tied up at number one here. Now, now let's go number two. Number two, number two is definitely Olive Garden. All right, that was my number two as well. And is the third going to be your local restaurant? No, I, the no. Yeah, the third will be my restaurant. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. I, I, I didn't know that was. I didn't know if that was local or not. But yeah, my third is going to be my local restaurant. It's it's a, it's a place called O'Charlie's. Okay, perfect. They got some, they got some like solid bread. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I mean, that's, but that's good though. We got the first two together, so that's good. That's perfect. Yeah, because my third, we have a place up here called Bertucci's Italian chain restaurant. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's many now. I think most of them are going out of business. But this bread, it is amazing. I mean, it's it's got the the kind of the hard crust on the outside, warm center, very fluffy, uh, really good stuff. They give you you know the oil with it and um, great bread, fantastic bread, but. But Texas Roadhouse, I'm glad you had that as your number one because we could do a whole interview about the Texas Roadhouse bread. I swear to God. I could do a whole interview about food for sure. Oh, man. Yeah, we, we just, we're just we getting off track here, but I think it was for a good reason. I think we needed to get off track there, have that discussion. There's no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was perfect for me. <laughs> I'm hungry now. I got to go get something. I got to go to like Texas Roadhouse or something. But I think I, I, think, I, where I'm gonna, I think I know where I'm going to go for dinner. Hey, that's, that's, that was the goal of the interview right here. You know, get you ready for your next meal, get you thinking about food a little bit. So, um, no, that was good. I'm glad, I'm glad we're, we're going to have to promote this heavy with the, with the bread here and stuff. So, um, my, my last two questions for you here, I mean, they're pretty fun ones. Um, I have to ask you, I mean, do you have any pregame rituals, you know, before games? Um, I know it might have something to do with food. I don't know, but do you have anything you kind of do before each game to kind of get locked in, clear your mind a little bit? Um, no, nah, because overall I'm just a, I'm an outgoing, childish guy. So I feel like if I, I always felt like if I locked in or if I, you know, was serious, then I would probably slip up and have a bad game. Mm-hmm. Um, so with me, I just normally just take a nap. Honestly, mm-hmm. um, like we got to be at the gym at a certain time, so I'll go back. Uh, I'll take a nap in the locker room after shoot around and. Pretty much just wake up whenever we're supposed to be there, go get tasted, and then just go about it. I really don't do anything special. Mm-hmm. And then I'll obviously listen to music, but other than that, that's all I pretty much do. It's kind of the best way to do it, you know, just kind of stay relaxed, yeah. head, in, head into the game uh, with a kind of a clear conscience, clear mind. Sometimes that's, you know, the mm-hmm. best way to perform right there, uh, not to get too... Uh, I, do, I, do, I do, I do not, um, I don't shoot before the games. I don't know why. I feel like that means really? mental is- yeah, I don't shoot like most of the most of the time. Guys will be out there like an hour, two hours mm-hmm. before the game, shooting, getting some shots up. But with me, I can't do it just because I feel like it messes with me mentally. Like mm-hmm. it'll mess with me mentally if I start missing. Yeah. So and I'm hey, like, no, nah, I'm just like, oh. I mean, I, I get it. You're you're saving your makes for the game. I like that though. That's a good. Yeah. And good too, and I don't want to get fresh. I don't want to get frustrated by and shoot around mm-hmm. or, you know. And after, you know, like a pregame workout, I don't want to get frustrated and have my mental state all messed up before I actually get in the game because that's when it matters, obviously. So I just try to go in there with a free conscious and just play. You know, maybe that's why I sucked at basketball when I when I was younger because I, every time I'd shoot around, I'd be throwing up bricks. I'd be throwing up bricks, man. I'm telling you. Um, so I should have taken a page out of your book, just not shot around because, yeah. you know, you have a bad shoot around. That can just set the precedence for the day. I mean, stuff like that. It's, it's done it. It's done it to me multiple times. So I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I'm done doing this." I played my best game. My best game this past year, like it was a game. I hit seven threes. I didn't touch a ball. Like even in shoot around, I was lazy in shoot around. I didn't touch a ball until maybe we did two line layups. Really? Like fifteen. Like we had like fifteen minutes left on the clock just because of. <laughs> I was just like, I'm not feeling it. Like I'm just gonna wait for the game. Like just get me to the game. I don't want to touch a ball. Because, I mean, I feel like, because with me, obviously, you want to be mentally tough, but at the same time, when you see misses, you still, mm-hmm. you still obviously start second-guessing yourself. Oh, yeah. 
no doubt. So I was trying to stay away from that as much as I can. And, and I mean, it worked. So I started doing it, and then I started having some, some solid games after that. Yeah, keep keep that up because it's it's worked for you fine. So uh, I mean, sure. just yeah, don't don't even touch a ball till tip off. I mean, your first yeah. shot that'll be the first time you 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 know touch a ball and you'll make it. I, I feel like so. Oh, definitely yeah. uh definitely unique right there but it's been working for you so first time we've heard that too um but wow yeah that's a very interesting pregame ritual right there and um i mean hey whatever works honestly so you've had the you've had the solid college career and uh just keep doing that i guess i mean keep doing that right there and um i know my second fun question for you here before we wrap up with the the final question the hardest one of the interview it's not it's really not that hard but uh you might have to think about it a little bit but um, let's say Game Seven, NBA Finals, ball gets kicked to you in the corner. Um, keep in mind, before this game, you didn't shoot around at all, so you're feeling really good. Ball gets kicked to you in the corner. If you could step back and hit a three with anyone in your grill at the buzzer to win the finals here, who would that player be and why? Who would that player be and why? That is tough. That's tough. That's a tough question. I've never thought about. I'm gonna have to go with um. I definitely have to say Steph or Clay. There you go. Just because there you go. my idols. I'm saying I look up to them. I try to model what I do after them. So definitely have to say one of them just to have that, just to have that on them. Have that on yeah, the that resume, be, too. Have that on the yeah, resume. That would, be, that would be, yeah, that would be life changing to have that experience. Oh, that'd be crazy. It'd be all over ESPN, all over Sports Center, too. Um, you'd probably I never be that. able, you'd never be able to get away from it. You'd be seeing it on Twitter, Facebook. Oh. If you, I mean, it'd be everywhere. So. Um, hey, quit basketball for that one. Oh, that'd be – you'd have to get a picture. You'd have to hang it up in the house, um, and you just have to – you'd really have – I'd retire after that one for sure. Oh, man. Man, you got to keep going. You got to do it again. You got to do it in next year's finals. You can't just you can't just quit after that. I mean, you got to go back to back. Uh, that's tough, but that's tough to beat, though. Y'all, I don't know if you can beat that because then if not, then you got expectations, and then if you don't – if you don't surpass them, then it's over with. You're going to feel like a letdown. Uh, yeah, I know. It's tough to beat. It's tough to beat. This is what I think you should do. You should game seven of the finals. You hit one in uh, Curry's face. You guys come yeah. out to the finals next year. You hit one in Clay's face. And then you guys, yeah. back to back to back finals, you come back again. Curry and Clay on you. Hit them in both their face. And then and then you can retire. That's the point when you retire right there. Okay, man. So I got, okay, I got you. I can't retire after the first one. I gotta make sure. Okay, I got you. Exactly. Three rings and and three highlight plays that you will never forget for the rest of your life. And that is that's the point where you can retire right there because I don't think you can top that. So, um, that should be that should be your goal right there. I mean, I know it's a tough one, um, but definitely you got to shoot high here. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. We'll make sure that we print T-shirts when it happens. Um, but we'll go from there. And I mean to close up here, I want to ask you now after that nice conversation about just hitting shots in in the Golden State Warriors grills here. Five years from now, I mean, where do you kind of see yourself? I mean, what would be the perfect situation for Brevin Galloway? That's kind of that's a really tough question because I talk mm-hmm. with my you know I talk with my girl and my family about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I want to be making a good bit of money playing professionally ba- professional basketball. You mm-hmm. know, I want to play professionally. But I haven't really thought about where I would want to end up because, I mean, there's a lot of good places overseas. Obviously, mm-hmm. the league is, you know, the main goal. But um, I don't know. I always see myself playing overseas and just, like, kind of experiencing life a little bit, making good yeah. money overseas. Like, I feel like that's something that I want to do. I don't want to miss out on mm-hmm. that opportunity. And plus, the money's tax-free, too. So, I mean. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know, though. But, damn, five years from now. I don't know. That's tough. I definitely want to be playing basketball somewhere, but I don't know where, though. <laughs> Sometimes that's the best way to think, though, because it leaves the options open, you know? Yeah, it does for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely open-minded when it comes to my um, the opportunities that are becoming my way after this season and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, hopefully I'm able to have a good season, so I'll be able to kind of, you know, pick where I want to go and I won't have to, I won't have to be forced or, like, I won't have just one option or one place to choose. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, yeah, I think but- – yeah, the thing that's great about overseas too is, I mean, you can go experience a different way of life, kind of experience the world a little bit, and then you always have that choice to come back to the United States, play in the NBA if you wanted, because, you know, when you already have a few years under your belt playing overseas, I mean, that looks real good to teams. I know teams are always looking for those guys overseas and that talent overseas, 
especially guys that, you know, went to college here in the United States. I mean, we've seen a lot of guys mm-hmm. kind of go play a few years overseas, come back, play in the league. So definitely nice to see that you're keeping the options open. And um, I'm sure you'll have a, you know, great year this year at Charleston. Don't pick up a ball all summer, though, all right? Because you got to, <laughs> <laughs> you got to, you got to get ready here. But um, that's true, though. That's true, though. I know. I mean, you, you got to just go in clear conscious, clear mind, and uh, and we'll see what happens for your senior season here. But, but Brevin Galloway, I mean, hey, thank you so much for joining us here on the side today. You know your basketball. You know your bread. Uh, it, was, it was great to have you on. Great to hear a little bit about your career and your plans for the future here. Yes, sir. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. I will do it again sometime. <laughs> yeah, great time. I mean, we'd love to have you on again uh, after this senior season for sure, um, catch up with you and whatnot. Hopefully it gets started on time. I know that's one thing we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, so best of luck with that. Um, but we'll put a link down to your Twitter below so people can follow your career uh, in your last season here at Charleston and beyond. And we'll also put a link to Charleston's website so you guys can check out news and updates with the team this season as they try and build off of last year where they went 17 and 14, had a great season. But guys, thanks so much for joining us here on Ed Sports Network again for another interview. And as always, we'll see you guys next time.